Welcome back to another Top 25 Countdown here on Boxing Legends TV. Today, we present the ultimate list of boxing's most elite rapid-fire pugilists. Thomas really nailed! Big left hook, big right hand! Down it goes, big left Thomas! It feels like an eternity since we've uploaded one of these, but today's video will stand above all others before and after. Raw clips, performance cards, key stats, and most importantly, a migraine for the poor men that had to share the ring with them. Now Ortiz is gonna... Oh my God! The fighters will be ranked by pound for pound, so you might see a few slightly slower, bigger guys higher up, but I can assure you, to make this list, you've gotta be a speed demon of the highest order. First up, we have the currently active George Linares. There are only a handful of fighters listed today that still participate in the sport, but I think it's fair to say the lightweight warrior has proven his deadly fast hands at world level long enough to earn a spot. But it would be an upset. Oh, down goes Campbell on a right hand by Lenoris. Lou Dibble was asking for it back in that between the sixth and seventh round. And Eddie Hobson pouring it on. Good activity hey, for Hobson. He can put 10, 12 punches together right now. Sonny Long doesn't really know what to do. Oh, look out. He's gone for more. There's three. Is there one more? There is. If you're wondering who the hell Eddie Hobson is, don't be alarmed. I can actually imagine there are a few hardcore fans watching this thinking the same thing. Well, it was obvious that you couldn't, that he could not deal with the hand speed of Eddie Hobson tonight. Another step in the development of Eddie Hobson, now back to Sam. This once standout teenage amateur failed to leave much of a legacy as a pro. In all honesty, he had the tools to be an elite champion, but was never the same after suffering his first defeat at 26-0. Eddie, he won the Whoa! You'll struggle to find a YouTube video with more than a thousand views with Hobson in the title, which is sad considering the talent he possessed. A fantastic boxer mover that could strike like lightning from all angles. Undefeated Eddie Hobson in the white trunks, and he floors Hector Bonhardine. Oh, good combination by Judah. Pouring it on. No doubt hoping to finish with a knockout. Oh, then you would have had a problem. I'd be really excited. Combination from Judah followed by a left. Zab Judah is a name you'll see pop up on many lists like this. However, it's vital the clips presented are from back when he still had a bit of hair on his head. Sure, they're a bit grainier in terms of visual quality, but it's before the 2000s when his speed and reflexes were at their most ferocious. Of that here in the opening minutes. No, it was interesting, McGrone said he's hard to hit with two punches clean, he's hard to catch up with. Super Zab might be the face of boxing memes nowadays, but he was admittedly a top draw contender in his day. It was no big secret that Zab Judah, as an amateur, was actually sparring with Pernell Whitaker. And the stories were that he would hold his own. Here, Johnny loads up the right hand, left hook again. Oh, the big turn on that right hand! Don't need to be sure Look like at this! Look at this! Oh, oh. There were so many things to love about Johnny Tapia, with his amazing fighting style being just one of them. <laughs> He's embarrassing the WBA's number one contender. What can I tell you? One of the most unique boxers in history for the way he could knuckle down and trade in the center of the ring. Tapia had that crazy sort of speed that looked sped up at times, but I can assure you, like all the other clips in this video, it hasn't been manipulated in any way. That real power of, look at that, whoa! Whoa, what a thump as Walker hits the canvas! North, the finish man puts another two rights down the pipe. They were down the pipe, it was a good comeback. Terrible Terry Norris was an explosive beast in his prime. If his opponent showed a slight glimpse of weakness, he would pounce faster than a starving cheetah, whether the bell had sounded or not. Round three. And they fight after the bell. Outside of his dirty tactics, he was also known for his impressive hand speed and combinations, something the legendary Sugar Ray Leonard had to find out the hard way. Body blow landed by Terry Norris. He's inside of 10, Norris. Fight, he should be given a license to. 
the future world champion Terry Norris. This is my last fight. Thank you for coming out. God bless you all. Michael Dokes defies the standard model of a speedster. He's a heavyweight, slightly chubby, and for much of his career, an alcoholic and drug addict. I think it was supposed to happen like that. It taught me a great lesson. Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson reap all the praise when it comes to quick heavyweights. But I think Dokes lets his shots fly just as fast, if not faster. The opening round, scheduled for 12. He the first fighter that I fought. You know, as a heavyweight, he had quick hands just like mine. Whatever I hit him with, he hit me back. If I hit him three times, he hit me three times. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Holyfield, he's taking big shots. Oh, he's gotten hurt. He's got Holyfield in some trouble here. His corner told him when Tony rolled to go underneath. He keeps going on top. Tony with magnificent hand speed. Left and right. While James Tony will always be renowned for his defensive wizardry during his prime, you'll have to give credit where it's due and rank him amongst the top middleweights of all time in terms of hand speed as well. Tony has an incredible 30-year career in professional boxing, winning countless titles across countless divisions. While I enjoy watching an overweight James toy with the guys up at Cruiser and Heavyweight, nothing compares to the slim 160-pound version of himself, a good six to seven years of pure destruction. Probably no surprise that the greatest boxer of this generation makes the list, and it could quite easily be for the slick, pot-shotting style during the tail end of his career. Sticks the right hand, and there's a counter left hook to the body by Canelo, but Mayweather keeping him at bay with the jab. People often overlook just how fast Floyd can throw a single punch, especially for a man in his mid-30s. Still, he makes it at number 14 for the way he took fighters apart for the first 10 or so years of his career. Bang. Took a left touch, grabbed the back. Floyd Mayweather is supposed to win. He's a virtuoso in his prime. Only complacency truly can endanger him. Oscar De La Hoya turned pro in 1992, and it wasn't until the turn of the century where he started to suffer the defeats we see on his record today. During that time, he fought Hall of Fame legends back to back and took them apart with rapid fire combinations. Uh, Lyndon oh, 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 Even the great Julio Cesar Chavez admitted he'd never seen speed like De La Hoya. Chavez at this point now blood from the nose of Julio Cesar Chavez. I personally think Oscar is one of the most underrated fighters in the modern era. Glance over that resume and watch back some of the old tapes. A formidable talent beat only by himself. What a brave man Oscar De La Hoya is. Expected, he said he's not looking for the Tyson of one million matches. Here's a combination up the cut by Tyson. Tyson, lay it on, carry it on. Down goes Bruno. Tyson puts him with the left hand. Tyson moves in for the kill. Two uppercuts on the left hand. I hope you didn't think that we were going to miss out on Kid Dynamite. Mike Tyson set the model for how all short heavyweights should take to the ring against these modern day dinosaurs. Tyson misses a left and then lands a pulverizing left that sends Foley crashing to the canvas. Many regard Tyson as the fastest heavyweight of all time, which is fair enough, but to think many regard him as one of the hardest hitters as well, geez, you just have to feel sorry for his opponents. I didn't challenge me with it somewhat prim primitive skills. They're just as good as dead. If he can beat this man, there's another one. There's a big left hook. Why not stop it now? And there's the right top of the... Trying to land two. Another right, right hand. Stone is in trouble. Left hook. And Jay Nady stops the fight. That is a flat-out knockout. A 
Another entrant that might raise a few eyebrows, but when Shane Mosley burst onto the scene in the mid-90s, fight fans around the world were truly believing this might be the next pound-for-pound -pound star. Big left hand by Mosley. Oscar De La Hoya on phase. Mosley landing again. Mosley is another one of those guys that fought the who's who of everybody from his era. A three-weight world champion that, if he didn't whip your ass, would certainly go down trying. A future Hall of Famer for sure. Mosley, Mosley, Mosley! It pains me to watch back a young Gamboa and wonder how great he might have been if it wasn't for his promotional problems. Ain't no rings around my eye, ain't no blood coming out my nose. That should indicate I haven't been in there with Gamboa. Before his loss to Terrence Crawford in 2014, Gamboa was running through world champions with staggering ease, consistently firing off some of the most visually pleasing combinations you'll ever see. To prepare physically for this. Oh! Singer did not. Wow! Fast last night, I cut the light off my bedroom, hit the switch, was in the bed before the room was gone. Come on, this isn't competition anymore. This is the bloodline. This is absolutely fantastic. Oh, what is a tough spot in there with Clay peppering it and down he goes. Muhammad Ali takes the number 10 slot due to his breathtaking performances during the 60s. His slick, upper body movement and mesmerizing footwork made him as close to being untouchable as possible. Then you accompany that with his studding power and blitzing hand speed and you're left with a man worthy of the greatest aliens. <laughs> but the man's in trouble, I'm gonna show you how great I am. The boxing world had never quite seen a prime fighter like Manny Pacquiao before, not just because he blitzed through eight weight divisions, but rather the manner and how he dealt with elite world champions back to back. One of my personal favorites of all time, Manny was a true champion in and out of the ring. He took on every challenge life could throw at him and conquered them all in devastating fashion. From the year 2000 to 2010, we witnessed one of the greatest primes in any boxer's career. Although many will argue Floyd was a better fighter, you can't deny the entertainment value Manny brought to the ring. I can handle his punches, he's just too fast. Was that basically the story of the fight? Yeah, he was, he was too fast. Fucker was too fast. <laughs> Just as the undefeated Rocky Marciano called it today, and just before the Big Bear Sunny listing crushed everything in his path, a man by the name of Floyd Patterson reigned as the number one heavyweight in the world. Patterson had unprecedented skills. He could leap five feet across the ring and land a four-punch combination in the blink of an eye, so fast it could be missed by the viewers at home. For me, Patterson is the fastest heavyweight in history. At his best, it was like watching a bigger version of Sugar Ray Robinson. Although Amir Khan is one of the most heavily criticized fighters in the modern game, there's absolutely no denying that he's one of the fastest punchers in history. Khan blocking the right hand with his glove. And he's not caught here, but his confidence isn't. Blocking this. Oh, the eyes of judges, incidentally. Oh, oh. And down goes Madonna. When Amir enters the ring, he lays it all on the line. Even with a proven glass jaw, he continually leaves himself exposed just to let his hands do what they do best, which as a fan is hard to watch, but makes for unmissable TV for casual viewers. He's all over the place. The list got a high speed on him. And it's all over. He's just walking at the Camacho's like walking into a machine gun there. And uh, he's going to have to throw three or four or five or six shots. Risk missing a lot of them, just so he can get oh, a goal. Oh, right hand shot. there. At number six, it's macho time as we look back at one of boxing's greatest shows. In Florida, he's a three-time world champion, undefeated with a record of 38 and 0. 
ladies and gentlemen, it's macho time. He's the WBO Junior Welterweight Champion of the World. Hector Camacho wasn't everyone's favorite prospect as he began climbing the ranks in the early 80s. The guy was cocky as hell and could often be quite disrespectful in the ring, but as time passed, our hearts grew fonder of this Puerto Rican street kid that was just living life to the max and enjoying his job. Just tune in, keep watching me. What can I tell you? It's Macho time. Now it's time to separate the boys from the men. Sugar Ray Robinson comes in at number five for his jaw-dropping speed during the 1950s. So Graziano has scored the first knockdown. And there goes his mouthpiece and Graziano hits the canvas. Just bear in mind, there's no fight footage of him in his true prime six or seven years prior to this, where it's reported by the men at ringside he was much faster and punched considerably harder. Oh, I saw him at his best, huh? Mm -hmm. He was the best fighter athlete, pound for pound. Robinson is regarded by many of the sport's top-tier historians as the greatest of all time. It isn't exactly hard to see why. Pound for pound. When they say Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest fighter pound for pound, meaning that I imagine if he was a heavyweight fighting the same style, he'd be the greatest. Capitol Heights, Maryland, very compactly built. Possibly a pair of the fastest hands in the sport. It's touched him with the left hand. The body oh. the right hand. What a shot! As we reach number four, I think it's a good time to remind people that the clips in this video are not sped up. Because when you cut down Gary Russell Jr.'s best moments, you're left with some pretty unbelievable footage. Although Gary is only 30 years old and currently at the height of his career, it's impossible not to notice the slight dip in hand speed. Rewind the clock seven or eight years and you might be looking at the fastest fighter in history, but he just didn't quite do it at the level of the men above it. Trying to win, now he's getting driven back. Steve Smolder taking a big look. Let's watch. 